Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus and check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4 as well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What is going on guys? Bangle here coming back at you with another video and today we are back doing another mock draft. The order is mainly set. The first 20 teams who are not playoff teams, obviously, uh, have their order stuck in concrete. It's not going to change unless they trade those picks, which will happen, in my opinion. I think a lot of these picks are going to be traded, but for the sake of continuity, I will not be doing any trades. If you guys want to see a mock draft with trades, make sure to let me down, uh, know down in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe as well, if you're not already, um, and hey, share the video. Let me know what you think. Cardinals are on the board at number one, and they're going to take Nick Bosa, an edge out of Ohio State. Maybe the best player in this draft. I think a lot of people have tried to uh, say maybe Nick Bosa shouldn't be the pick here if you're the Cardinals, and I think they should trade out of this, and if I were running the Arizona Cardinals organization, that's exactly what I'd be looking to do. Since you, you think you have your quarterback of the future in Josh Rosen, you're probably going to look to trade down, probably going to look to trade back, but if you don't, which is what this entire mock draft is, I think that pairing someone next to Chandler Jones would be the perfect plan. Some guys have been saying, uh, maybe help out the interior. The Cardinals are somewhat weak on the interior of their defensive line. And I'm not necessarily disagreeing. I think Corey Peters is kind of meh, and Rodney Gunter also is kind of meh. But, I mean, what else do you have on the edge? Not really too much. Chandler Jones is good. But I believe you're starting Vontarius Dora. You got to improve. You can't be running him out there at left end. Go ahead. Take Nick Bosa. He's going to work out perfectly. Slide right in and be an immediate upgrade on the defensive line. Number two. I have the 49ers taking Devin White. I've kind of bounced back and forth on who I think the Cardinals, or excuse me, who I think the 49ers, if I said Cardinals, my mistake, who I think the 49ers would take given their draft position. I've said, hey, maybe it'd be a guy like Jonah Williams, upgrade offensive tackle. Maybe it would be Greedy Williams at cornerback. Maybe it'd be Quinn and Williams, upgrade the interior of the defensive line. Basically, anyone with the last name Williams is pretty much applicable for this spot. However, I ended up settling on Devin White. And I say settling. It really isn't settling. I think it's a really, really big upgrade. The 49ers are a team that have a decent linebacking core. Fred Warner had a great up-and-coming season. He was a rookie. Uh, and then you have, what, Mark Enziocha. He's a Pro Bowl special teamer. Not really a fantastic starting linebacker, in my opinion. And you have Elijah Lee, who's kind of okay. In my opinion, this is a big toss-up with who you go here. They could go edge. In my opinion, Solomon Thomas is not the answer. And I don't really think Eric Armstead is a true edge player. Um, and you could go defensive tackle. You could go Quinton Williams here. You could go Ed Oliver. I really do like the Devin White fit. I think you missed a huge player when Reuben Foster was cut, and he was cut for good reason, to be fair. But you're missing out on a huge player when you don't have him in the lineup. They need help at linebacker. They also need help at safety. Their defense is just not that good uh, overall. But I think with a player like Devin White manning the middle of the field, it's going to put you in a much better position. Kind of be that Mike linebacker. Maybe you could play that Sam spot uh, instead of Enziocha. Kind of depends what they want to do. I think Devin White could play outside linebacker in a 4-3 inside uh, in a 4-3 or 3-4. But for the 49ers, in this sake, it would make a lot of sense for him to uh, play inside linebacker in that 4-3. Fred Warner could kick outside. You really have a bunch of different options with this pick. And that's a lot of the reason why I like it so much. Jets take Jonah Williams. Short and sweet on this one. You got to protect Sam Darnold. Your offensive line is not fantastic. You need help at offensive tackle. Jonah Williams provides you much needed help. You can play left or right. Raiders go Cleveland Farrell. Kind of bounced back on this one for a while. Thought maybe they would go Ed Oliver or Quinn and Williams. And both would make a ton of sense at this spot. However, for the Oakland Raiders, who already have P.J. Hall, who isn't terrible... Maurice Hurst, who I like quite a bit. Maybe hold on to Jonathan Hankins even more. He's been a pretty good player in the league. Maybe you look to upgrade a much-needed defensive end spot because you have Arden Key right there, who I do like, but he hasn't been it so far for the, for the Oakland Raiders. And then Frosty Rucker has been playing left end in their base defense, and that is just not a good spot at all. Now, I like Frosty Rucker as much as the next guy, but at the end of the day, Frosty Rucker is 35 years old, and 
starting. He's basically a defensive tackle. He's playing that edge spot. The Raiders are an absolute mess. It's very bad. They need to upgrade here. Cleveland Farrell, arguably the best edge player available. So why not take him? Why not upgrade the Raiders at that spot? Bucks go Quinn and Williams out of Alabama. Kind of amazing that Quinn and Williams has fallen all the way to five. And I really do say all the way to five because he is a top two, top three player in this draft. And I think a lot of teams are going to recognize that. Extremely disruptive force on the inside is a guy that could work as nose tackle. He is a very good pass rusher. Not as great of a run suffer, but really, really talented, powerful pass rusher at that defensive tackle spot. And I think the Bucks, who could be on the verge of cutting Gerald McCoy, and I know that does sound crazy, but I watched an interview with Gerald McCoy. It seems like he's probably on his way out of Tampa Bay. He spoke like a guy that is not going to play there next year. And I know you took defensive tackle with Vita Vea last year. But if Gerald McCoy is not going to be on the team next year, the Bucs can save a lot of money by cutting him. I think maybe you take the best player available, and it would be at a position of need. I have the Bucs going Quinn and Williams. I know probably a lot of people won't like this pick, but this is an insane player, insane value for the Bucs as we move on to the Giants at number six. They go Josh Allen, outside linebacker out of Kentucky. I really have him at outside linebacker here because he fits every single scheme. He could play... 3-4 outside linebacker, play 4-3 defensive end, can play 3-4 uh, inside linebacker, also in a 4-3 as well. I think he can play 4-3 outside linebacker. Giants play in a 3-4. He would work so well at 3-4 outside linebacker, a guy that can rush the passer, also at the uh, athleticism to drop back in coverage, make some plays that way. But he is a fantastic pass rusher. He would play outside linebacker in the 3-4, going after the quarterback, oh, I don't know, in the neighborhood in 90% of the time really really solid player i like him a lot i am a giants fan i do think this would be a good fit maybe that's you know my heart trying to pick josh allen over my over my mind and my brain that would say maybe the giants would lean towards a different position a lot of people are probably going to want me to mock Dwayne haskins here to the giants and i guess i i wouldn't really mind that it wouldn't be at the top of the list i think the giants have so many other needs besides quarterback that when you have a player on the board like josh allen at this point i think you'd be best set to take him over a quarterback so apologies if you want Dwayne Haskins I just don't see it I don't particularly want it moving on to the Jaguars at number seven they go Dwayne Haskins quarterback out of Ohio State the Giants don't get him the Jags say all right yeah we'll take him he'll be our quarterback of the future probably not the worst idea uh, he's a guy I didn't love at the beginning of the year but each game that he plays he seems to just get better and better and better uh, picking up what defenses are doing, beating zone coverage, has the arm strength to beat man consistently. He's, he is pretty good. So I don't really mind mocking him in the top 10 here. Uh, and the Jags, with a pretty good group of players around him, get their quarterback of the future. At number eight, I had the Lions rounding out this first little slide with Rashawn Gary, defensive end out of Michigan. I have him listed at defensive end. I really think he's a defensive tackle. I really do. And I think he would work so well at defensive tackle. But when you take a team like the Lions, who kind of play what seems to be more of a hybrid defense, and I think Rashawn Gary is that type of hybrid player that can both play maybe edge, but also defensive tackle. So it's kind of whatever you want to do. Currently, the Lions are starting Eli Harold at right end because I don't think they're going to be able to re-sign Ziggy Ansah. And then Devon Kennard's playing left end. On the inside, you have Ricky Jean Francois and Romeo Aquara. Um, and Damon Harrison is in their uh, run-stuffing package. And then everyone kind of moves around. Romeo Aquara sometimes plays right end. Ricky Jean Francois sometimes moves out and plays left end. They have John Atkins at defensive tackle that plays a lot. But overall, their defensive line is fairly weak, in my opinion. Uh, it kind of depends what they want to do. They could go linebacker. I think it's a little bit early. I think there's better value in the second round with guys that could fall like like Devin Bush or Mac Wilson, guys like that. But they do take a Michigan player. Keeping the Michigan players in Michigan, Rashawn Gary, very versatile player for you, offers a lot of different things. You keep him in state. Why not? Makes a lot of sense. Kind of a fun pick. At number nine, I have the Buffalo Bills taking Greg Little, tackle out of Ole Miss. Basically, the deal with here, we're not going to spend too much time on these offensive line picks. 
the Bills really, really need an upgrade on the offensive line. You got to protect your quarterback in the future. If that's going to be Josh Allen, you got to protect him. Stop making him scramble so much. Greg Little out of Ole Miss goes to the Buffalo Bills. At number 10, have the Broncos going. Drew Locke out of Mizzou. Good player here, potentially for the Broncos. Uh, I think he fits because they need a quarterback. Case Keenum not getting it done. Clearly not doing anything with Paxton Lynch or Trevor Simeon. Uh, both of which are free agents now. Uh, I know Paxton Lynch was cut and Trevor Simeon will be at the end of the year, I believe. They need a new quarterback. They need to try to find their quarterback in the future. If that's Drew Locke, I don't know, but I think it's worth the risk. They take him in the top 10 as we do only see two quarterbacks go. A bit of a shakeup from last year. Bengals at number 11. Again, not going to spend far too much time on this. The Bengals need offensive line help. You got to protect Andy Dalton. Juwan Taylor is a very athletic player. I know that he, technically he's not the best tackle in the draft by a wide margin, but then again, neither is Greg Little. Cordy Glenn has not been getting it done at left tackle, and at right tackle, Bobby Hart, terrible with the Giants. He's been bad with the Bengals. They need an upgrade on the offensive line at almost every single position. You know, I don't mind Billy Price as much at center. He's also a guy that can play guard. But you need to upgrade these tackles, these guards, so badly. I need to see the Bengals go on offensive tackle with their first pick. Maybe that could be Juwan Taylor as we move to the Packers at number 12. They go Zach Allen, an edge rusher out of Boston College. I think this is a really solid pick. I know a lot of people don't love Zach Allen for whatever reason. I feel like people don't actually watch the tape. And if you watch highlights, I don't particularly care. But it's just not a good way to evaluate a player. Uh, at all it just is not it's not even my opinion it's just that's a fact if you the highlight shows their best plays it doesn't show what they do consistently on a regular basis Zach Allen is a pretty consistent edge rusher for uh BC he's been good his entire career at Boston College and the Packers who are desperately in need of edge help with guys like Clay Matthews guys like Nick Perry probably not going to be there next year and even if they are by some stretch of the imagination they're old. They're going to fade away. This is what happens. You got to get better. You got to get younger. You guys have heard me say that so often if you are uh, uh, fans of the channel. Zach Allen makes a ton of sense for the Packers here. They snag him at number 12 as the Dolphins go. Ed Oliver out of Houston. What? How does Ed Oliver fall all the way to number 13? How do the Dolphins end up with Ed Oliver? Well, I'll tell you. Based on the team needs of the teams picking ahead of him, you guys saw how I have the draft playing out at this particular moment in time. And Ed Oliver, who's a fantastic player that happens to be not incredibly technically sound, very good athlete, but needs to win more, needs to show off more with his hands, needs to show more pass rush moves, even though he's a very dominant run stopper because of his athleticism. Again, he wins because of his athleticism as a pass rusher. He's not technically sound as a pass rusher, which could hurt his value. So, I know I've had him going up high. I think is is you know sky's the limit for Ed Oliver, but I wouldn't be entirely shocked if he fell a little bit. And the Dolphins, for the I believe the second time in five years, basically end up with the steal of the draft with uh, Larmy Tunsil falling all the way to them. At this was a very similar spot. It might have been thirteen where Larmy Tunsil uh, fell. He went at number at number 13. So yeah, <laughs> every time the Dolphins pick at 13, I guess they're just going to get a steal. And Ed Oliver, at this particular moment in time, I do have going to the Dolphins. They need help on the defensive interior. Ed Oliver is a versatile player. I could see him playing defensive end in a 3-4 as well. Uh, maybe, I think he even has the athleticism to play 4-3 defensive end. I wouldn't, because I think he's much better on the inside. But this is the type of athlete we're talking about the type of versatility as we move on to the Falcons who I have taken Derek Brown a defensive tackle out of Auburn very very good player elite run stuffer and he really excels at getting after the quarterback for somebody of his size Derek Brown is absolutely massive he is so big so strong just an absolute run stuffing monster I don't know like how you make that type of athleticism 
that type of speed with someone that's 330 plus pounds, it is just incredible. And he is a really incredible player. Falcons, who are going to maybe be losing Grady Jarrett, and even outside of that, even outside of Grady Jarrett, you need another pass rusher on the inside. You need another run stuffer on the inside. You need a good three down defensive tackle. And that's exactly what Derek Brown can provide you. He is a very, very good player. So even if you do end up losing Grady Jarrett, Jack Crawford can't be your next best option. Derek Brown to the Atlanta Falcons, they upgrade that defensive line that has been uh, in need of a defensive tackle for some time now next to Grady Jarrett. As we move on to the next pick, that is going to be the Washington Redskins. I have them taking Cody Ford, an offensive lineman out of Oklahoma. And here's why that is. Based on the way I have this mock draft playing out, based on where I value these players and where I, I think teams might value these players, I don't think this is going to be a very quarterback-heavy class in the first round. And I know the Redskins are a team that now is in desperate need of a quarterback because Alex Smith may never play in the NFL again. I think a lot of these guys are going to be available in the second round. If you're looking at for a quarterback, you might see Daniel Jones, Clayton Thorson, Will Greer, further down maybe Easton Stick, Ryan Finley, whoever it is, whoever we're talking about. They will be available. One of those guys, two of those guys, three of those guys or more are going to be available in the second round. Uh, and maybe you could even trade up to the end of the first round if you're getting a little bit worried about it. But they need help on the, inf- uh, the offensive line badly. Cody Ford, I have as offensive line here. I think he can play tackle. He's playing right tackle for Oklahoma. He can also play guard. He's a versatile player. The Redskins need the help all over the defensive line. So this is the same pick I had last time. I still really feel like it, it's the best pick for them. As we move on to number 16, and I have the Panthers going Deontay Thompson. Uh, we talked about this last time. As I have the Panthers going Deontay Thompson again, they still need a safety. That much has not changed from a few weeks ago. Uh, and I don't really want to make this stale with going with the same pick every time, but I really think this is a perfect fit. I think Deontay Thompson's value is probably going to end up being somewhere around the middle of the first round. Mike Adams is like what, 50 or 60 years old, it feels like at this point, still playing strong safety and doing so at a very low level. And then you have Eric Reed at free safety. I mean, say what you want about Eric Reed um, and his, his uh, you know actions fighting for justice or, or whatever but i mean he's he hasn't been the same player since the concussions his his uh first couple years in san francisco because he was a very very good player he just isn't the same player and i'm not even sure if they're going to end up retaining him deontay thompson's a guy that can play free safety or strong safety uh, i think he has the versatility so carolina they get themselves a very much needed safety to help out make that secondary great who knows at number 17, I have the Cleveland Browns going Jeffrey Simmons, a defensive tackle out of Mississippi State. I like the Browns a lot. Like People always ask me, oh, what's your second, third, fourth, 18th favorite team? Well, I don't really have one, but if I had to have one, at number two, it would be the Cleveland Browns. I'm the biggest closeted Browns fan, and maybe it isn't. If you follow me on Twitter, you know I'm always talking about the Browns. I like I low key love the Browns. I think they're a really really good team, and I, I I cringe at the fact that I just said low key, but I really do. I like the Browns. I think more people know than I would care to admit. And even though I love the Charlotte Beast, Larry Ogunjobi, who's next to Larry Ogunjobi? What it was Tavon or Trayvon Coley, something like that. He's not good. When you have a player in this stacked defensive tackle class I really can't even say that enough this defensive tackle class is so good so talented in any other draft class if you inserted some of these guys in there at defensive tackle Jeffrey Simmons Derek Brown we talked about Quinnen Williams Ed Oliver even further down the board with guys like Raquan Davis or a Dexter Lawrence or Christian Wilkins or Jerry Tillery or Draymond Jones a lot of these guys are so good many of them would go in the top 10 of any other draft class they were inserted into However, with this defensive tackle class being as good as it is, with not every team needing a defensive tackle necessarily or not not being at the top of their wish list when they might be available, when you're going to have some of these awesome talents falling into the second, maybe even the third round, how do you get a player like Jeffrey Simmons at 17? Well, if you're the Browns, everything's been going right for you guys um, from a management and personnel standpoint, other than coaching, of course. But from a player management standpoint, everything's been going right for you guys the past couple of years. 
which is, it's honestly, it is justice because nothing had gone right for the Browns for decades in the draft. Really, that's what it came down to. The 90s, you know, and the 2000s, the Browns were decent in the 90s. You know, of course, uh, some of those playoff games against the Broncos where they couldn't come up. But after that, you know, when you're getting to the, the era of drafting Tim Couch and then just plummeting down, essentially for the next 20 years since 2000, which is absolute trash. It's deserved. The Browns have been so bad for so long. And with Jarvis Landry ending up in Cleveland, with Antonio Callaway ending up in Cleveland, who has sky-high potential, getting Miles Garrett, Joe Schobert turning into a Pro Bowl linebacker, stealing Demarius Randall from the Packers. They traded Deshaun Kaiser for him. And then they were playing, they're playing him at a natural free safety spot, and it turns out he's sick. David Njoku's starting to play better. And we didn't even talk about Baker Mayfield. Nick Chubb, what a great tandem in the backfield between your quarterback and your running back. That's a duo and a half. The interior offensive line is arguably the best in football with Joel Batonio, J.C. Treader, and Kevin Zeitler. You need help at tackle, and I get that. But also, your, your offense has been clicking. It has been. Just wait on Baker to develop. Target receiver in the second round. Maybe the third round. Bring one in free agency. Whatever you have to do. And I think they will take a receiver in the second round if they don't in the first. But got to help out that defense. I like Jannard Avery. I like Jamie Collins. I don't really want to give them a linebacker at this spot. I don't think it's a top need. They could go corner. I think maybe that's second, third round pick. Bring one in free agency. Whatever it has to be. Uh, I think a defensive tackle of Jeffrey Simmons caliber would be fantastic at this point. I know I spent a lot of time on this Browns pick, but I'm very excited about it. <laughs> Browns get Jeffrey Simmons. Great value at 17. Vikings, Dalton Risner out of Kansas State. Have him listed at offensive line here because just because just of his versatility. is a guy that can play guard, tackle, maybe even center. I don't really, I don't, I don't know about center, but I think guard and tackle for sure. He's been a rock for Kansas State the uh, past couple of years. He has been so talented, so good, and his versatility is something that is going to even up his value uh, much more than maybe it had been before from just a, uh, you know, a playing standpoint, from just, a, you know, being there. A, a, a true talent is what I want to say, but um, his versatility is going to boost that, but moving on, we're not going to spend too much time on that. You need to help out the offensive line. Vikings offensive line, bad. Titans, number 19, I have them going Montez Sweat out of Mississippi State. Had this last time, but even with, we, we knew Brian Aragpa wasn't going to be returning. Derek Morgan likely not going to be returning as well. You needed to go edge anyway. And then if you have Harold Landry and now you get Montez Sweat, I, I, that's just a great combo. It's young, it's talented, it can be there for years. Getting after the quarterback progressing with each other that it, that would be a really really fun combo to watch in Tennessee they need edge help Montez Sweat played three four outside linebacker four three defensive end I think he's a versatile player I think he's quick and I think he's talented and that's exactly what you want to do uh, if you're if you're drafting take talented players that have versatility if they don't already fit your scheme but Montez Sweat I think will slide in very very nicely as we move on to number 20 number 20 is going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers as they grab DeAndre Baker. People have probably been wondering where these cornerbacks have been, but I just think based on the team's drafting and the caliber of player on the board, I think they would go different positions. So even though DeAndre Baker's a beast, even though Greedy Williams, Byron Murphy, you know, some of these top cornerbacks, even though they're really, really good players, they happen to fall. And the Steelers are extremely happy about that because they get one of the best cornerbacks in the draft and they're picking all the way at 20. DeAndre Baker goes to the Steelers, who are in need of a number one lockdown cornerback instead of getting already burned every game. Number 21, Eagles go Ja'Kai Polite out of Florida. Now, I'm a little bit mixed on Ja'Kai Polite. If you guys follow me on Twitter, which you can feel free to do, twitter.com slash Designs. I haven't been shy about telling you. I think Ja'Kai Polite is kind of a tweener. I like his athleticism. I, I worry about pure pass rush moves, and I don't think he's exceptional at winning without pure athleticism. He is a good edge bender. I do like that, but I think he's a classic tweener. I don't think he has the technical ability to play outside linebacker. 
as a guy that can drop back into coverage. I think he's just a pure pass rusher, and I, I question those abilities at this moment. Still more tape to watch, uh, more stuff to figure out. But for me, I don't think Ja'Kai Polite is a first-round talent. He That doesn't mean he can't end up being a good player, but I, I would probably slap a third-round grade on him at the moment. I think he's getting a lot of hype, which is why I have the Eagles going edge here, going Ja'Kai Polite. They need edge help. Uh, and Michael Bennett probably won't be on the team next year. You can save a lot of money uh, by cutting him. And then Brandon Graham, his contract is up. He's going to be a free agent. What do you have left at at edge? Derek Barnett? All right, that's fine. What else? Exactly. Ja'Kai Polite goes to the Philadelphia Eagles as we move on to number 22. That is the Indianapolis Colts. They go Greedy Williams. How does Greedy Williams fall all the way to 22? I'm mixed about him. Uh, I know a lot of people value him as a top five player in the draft. In these mock drafts, he's been the one player that that goes up and down the board the most from so high to, to so low, potentially. Um, and I'm not even sure if he's the best cornerback in this class yet. I know he's getting a lot of hype like he is. I, it's not that I don't buy it. It's just that I'm, I'm unsure at this moment. I think his frame is in need of putting on a few pounds for one, durability, but two, so he doesn't get bodied by these big NFL receivers that he's going to be targeted, or excuse me, tasked with, with stopping targets from being completions. So he's a good player. I, don't get me wrong on that. I, I, I think he is a first-round talent. I'm just not sure about all this top five, top ten hype that he's getting as he move on to number 23 with the Seattle Seahawks as they go David Edwards offensive tackle out of Wisconsin not going to spend too much time on this one Seahawks need offensive line help even though Russell Wilson is so adept at getting out of the pocket and and evading those sacks and even working navigating around the pocket escaping these sacks maybe have him do a little bit less of that as he's getting older you got to protect him how long is is he going to be as durable as he is maybe forever he's going to live forever he's an immortal I'm calling it uh but no you got to help out, get an offensive tackle in there. David Edwards probably makes you a better unit. He'll start at right tackle. Not really sure what Dwayne Brown's up to. He's been pretty good this year. Their offensive line has been good. I'm not saying it hasn't been, but based on the age of some of these players here and based on the talent of some of these guys, you need an offensive tackle. Maybe I'm not saying guard. Their guards have played well. They've had a good center play, but you do need an offensive tackle, I think, either opposite Dwayne Brown or to replace Dwayne Brown. Not 100% sure on his contract status. I think he probably has a year left at most. So this is a position that you do need to go out and improve. As we go number 24, the Oakland Raiders take Raekwon Davis. Defensive tackle out of Alabama. Another guy that, how is he falling all the way to 24? I don't even know if I mentioned him earlier when I was talking about all the good defensive tackles, but that just goes to show you how deep this class is. We didn't even talk about Gerald Willis out of Miami. He's pretty good. Um, Raekwon Davis, short and sweet. I didn't have the Raiders going defensive tackle early because I knew there would be some good defensive tackles later. So you can rotate guys in and out. You can have a versatile guy in there. Raekwon Davis, guy that can play nose tackle, a guy that can play, you know, any interior defensive line position and do so at a high level. Elite run stuffer, decent pass rush moves. But when you look at their current defensive line with Maurice Hurst and what, PJ Hall and Jonathan Hankins, Jonathan Hankins is a good run stuffer that probably is not going to spend his entire career with the Oakland Raiders. I think he was brought in as a free agent, so he's on a one-year deal right now as far as I know. Um, But P.J. Hall, decent pass rusher, probably a pass rush first player. And then Maurice Hurst, I think, is a better pass rusher than a run stuffer. So we already have them going edge. How about defensive tackle now? Just boost the entire position group in one fell swoop. Two defensive linemen go to the Oakland Raiders in round one. And now from 25 to 32, we have the Ravens kicking it off, going to Keel Harry, wide receiver out of Arizona State. And it, long and short of this is that the Ravens need more weapons. They have a young quarterback in Lamar Jackson. Doesn't look like Joe Flacco is going to be there next year. It really doesn't. And Michael Crabtree is pretty average, in my opinion. And then you have John Brown, who is, is not the same player that he once was. Willie Sneed is a, a typical kind of 3-4 guy that can play the slot, but I don't really value Willie Sneed that highly, if I'm honest. I think they need a true number one, and that is exactly what Nikhil Harry is. A true number one receiver, big body with decent speed, go up, get the football. Not a polished route runner by any means, but 
a true number one receiver in my eyes as I had the Texans going. Chris Lindstrom, offensive guard out of Boston College. Another versatile player. I think he can also play tackle. Um, and he is a big immediate upgrade to the Texans offensive line, which is bad. Number 27, the Patriots get another weapon for Brady or whoever their quarterback is at this time. If it's not Tom Brady, if he retires, I mean, you never know. That could come out of nowhere, and, and then all these mock drafts would change. Patriots taking quarterbacks. Patriots, you know, in need of a QB, trading up, whatever it be, whatever it may be. A.J. Brown is much-needed help to that receiving core. They have Julian Edelman, okay, in his 30s. Chris Hogan, who I believe is 30 or 31, and even even then, it's not like he's anything special. I don't think that Josh Gordon's ever going to play a game in the NFL again. I just don't think he's going to, based on I don't know how many indefinite suspensions now that have been uh, appealed and then overturned and then set in place again. It's just pretty ridiculous. They do need a receiver. A.J. Brown could help that out a lot. Now, he's not a typical Patriots receiver, if you catch my drift, but I think he has the typical abilities of a Patriots receiver. <laughs> And the fact that he is a good route runner who gets open and catches the football. Uh, and, I mean, what more do you need out of a wide receiver? Number 28, Raiders on the clock again. I once again give them Paris Campbell. I like Paris Campbell a lot. He's a very fast player. And that, in and of itself, gives you so many different options because it really opens the playbook. And it makes teams uh, play differently for your offense when they know they can be beaten over the top at any point you got to respect a speed threat always it's part of the reason that the chiefs have been so tough to stop this year is because tyree kill his speed is tough to account for uh, and the raiders john gruden gets himself a pure weapon at that receiver spot number 29 chargers go dexter lawrence out of clemson what can i say here they have two good edge rushers melvin ingram joey bosa he needs help on the interior of the defensive line brandon mebane I believe is a free agent not going to be there forever also not incredible so aside from that you don't really have much at defensive tackle if brandon mebane's not there what darius phylon damian square like it, it just you, you need help you need somebody better maybe they go linebacker here maybe they go safety derwin james has been incredible you know who hasn't been jaleel adai although adrian phillips has been okay um, I like Adrian Phillips, you know, hook him horns, of course. Uh, Desmond King is their slot cornerback. But I, I really think their most important position to upgrade is going to be defensive tackle. It really is. Maybe an offensive lineman. I think their offense is set. It's as good as it can be right now. Hunter Henry is going to come back next year. I think he's even coming back for the playoffs. So, I mean, they're in a good spot. I don't really mind the Chargers offensive line or offense in general. I think their defense needs to improve. And that's going to start with a beast run stuffer, Dexter Lawrence. Maybe not even the best defensive tackle out of Clemson. A lot of people have been asking me on Twitter as well. Hey, do you think that failing a drug test is going to hurt his combine stock? Or his draft stock? Or in the combine? They're going to test him at the combine is what I was going to say there. But not really. Still a really good player. Maybe they go Christian Wilkins over Dexter Lawrence. Maybe Draymond Jones. Maybe Jerry Tillery. It doesn't really matter. They need a defensive tackle. I'd be surprised if it wasn't a defensive tackle here, if I'm honest. Chiefs go Devin Bush out of Michigan. They need a linebacker. I think that pretty much going to be uh, a statement that you guys agree with if you're a Chiefs fan, if you're an NFL, NFL fan that knows the Chiefs. They need a defensive uh, help, whether it's a cornerback, whether it's a safety. If Eric Berry's back, maybe not so much, but still, you do need a safety. I also think that it wouldn't be the worst idea to take an edge rusher if you're the Chiefs. It kind of depends how things play out with Justin Houston getting older and D Ford in a contract year. I don't know whether he resigns with the Chiefs or not, but they could be out of two edge rushers next year. That is certainly a potential, um, but their defensive line's been pretty solid. I love Chris Jones. I think Alan Bailey's not great. I don't think Derek Nottie's great either, but I, get, I, I You need a linebacker more than you need a defensive tackle. So I am going to give them Devin Bush at this juncture. Rams go Amani Oru, Oruarie. That is a tough name to say, but I believe it, it's Oruarie. Oruarie. 
It is tough. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. Cornerback out of Penn State. He's actually coming on pretty strong. He's had a good year, and I was tempted to go Byron Murphy here, who I like quite a lot. But I think at the end of the day, this is going to be a better scheme fit for Orar, Ori, oh geez, Oruwarie, you'll have to forgive me, it's a tough name, uh, then Byron Murphy, I think Byron Murphy falls to the second round, unfortunately, but the Rams get themselves a much needed cornerback upgrade, if you watched any Rams game, you know that Marcus Peters is super overrated, Aqib Talib is old, you need more cornerbacks, you need better cornerbacks, maybe Amani Oruwarie can be that, Packers round things out. This is the Saints pick. They go Marquise Hollywood Brown, receiver out of Oklahoma. Aaron Rodgers gets himself a slot receiver. He gets himself a deep threat, and that's going to open up the offense. It's going to do a lot for the Packers because you don't just have to rely solely on Devontae Adams. Randall Cobb has not been the same player. Maybe Marquise Brown can be a very good replacement, but that is going to do it for me, guys. I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.